You are listening to Mishkne Elyon with Rabbi David Katz and Malcolm. Hi, Rabbi Katz. How are you? I'm good, Malcolm. How are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for asking. All right. We're on a roll, it looks like. And let's see where it goes. Everyone following along? This is... I've. <laughs> If you noticed on YouTube, I call it something different every time. I don't know. Just it happened once, I just keep doing it. So it's either the Heavenly Temple, Mishkan Elyon, Ezekiel's Temple, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. That's where we're at, and we're we're cruising along pretty good. So take it away, Malcolm. Go ahead. All right, we're at the top of page eighty-seven. The height of the gates. Understand that, with the exception of the inner gate, all the gates are very tall. I'll tell you they what, designed... I, since we're so deep into it, I'm just going to, let's cut out the first part and just, just go slow, right? And we'll try to merge the two steps and I'll follow along. So look for me to interject. So go ahead and start over, sorry about that, and, and look for my no interjections right away. Go ahead. Okay. Understand that with the exception of the inner gate, all the gates are very tall. For they are designed to meet the needs of those receiving from them. The gates are 50 cubits high, the entire array of souls and angels being divided into five. Wait a second. Wait. Um, it's it's really the legions of the angels. It's Va'ot. Ah, okay. The souls in the, le in the legions. Go ahead. However, the first gate is smaller than the others. As you surely understand, the light that reaches the lower worlds has only a tiny fraction of the intensity of the light that shines in its supreme dwelling. This small share is proportionate to the scale of the lower worlds and is quite sufficient for them. All right, uh, the next paragraph is the height of the first, the second, and the third temples. The height of the third temple is 100 cubits, although this is not stated explicitly by Ezekiel, who simply said, I saw the height of the house. The height is uniform along the entire length and breadth of the temple, and he did not need to specify it. Let me explain a great secret, but this is not the same as the height of the first temple, either in the upper world or on earth. The first temple was 120 cubits high. This was because it had an upper floor that brought it to this height. However, the temple seen by Ezekiel was only a hundred cubits high and did not have an upper floor. Understand that each divine attribute measures one hundred. Uh, since the first temple was built through Chokhmah, its height was a hundred cubits by virtue of Chokhmah, with an additional twenty cubits shining upon it from Keter, in order to bring Chokhmah to perfection. That uh, makes sense. This. Mm -hmm. By the way, 120 is the Gematria Elio and Navi. I don't know if that matters. Just it's a nice idea. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <clears throat> Since uh, where was I? Uh, this is why the first temple was built with an upper floor, indicating how the Ketzer, signified by the letter Kaf, hovers above Chokmah and radiates within it. This is why there were only 20 cubits from Ketzer and 100 from Chokmah. However, the third temple has no upper floor, for Keter is the head, and is raised above all else. The height of the third temple is a hundred cubits, these being the hundred of Keter. These hundred cubits are thus far greater than the entire hundred and twenty cubits of the height of the first temple. Accordingly, it is written, Great will be the glory of this last house. The second temple was also built to a height of 100 cubits as in the heavenly temple seen by Ezekiel in this prophetic vision. Had those who built it not known this, they would have not made any changes on their own initiative without having a firm basis, but would have retained the measurements of the first temple. The temple roof. From the wall of the sanctuary to the wall of the vestibule, great lights appeared in the form of beams, holding and strengthening the walls and keeping them in position. Each beam is a vav, emanating from the supreme vav of the holy name, blessed be he. There is a fundamental principle that you should understand. Every house derives from Malchus, while every roof derives from Tiferes. It is from the beams, therefore, 
that the flow of blessing is drawn to the house, just as Tiferes shines the light down to Malchus. In front of the vestibule are steps, which I will explain later with the help of God when I come to discuss the temple service. <clears throat> dimensions of the house. The prophet mentions three figures when speaking of the dimensions of the temple. 100, 90, and 70. Each of these figures wait, is connected wait, with... Wait, not, wait, 90? So it says here... One second. It has a source is in Ezekiel 41, 12 to 13. I have a note. It's, it might be a mistake. That's why there's a note. <clears throat> I don't know where he's taking me to the notes. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, there's a couple of things that he's correcting. Hold on. I'm guessing Rabbi Greenbaum saw that and fixed it. I don't know where the where he takes me. Um, oh, here. Sixty. His gear had Navi, Mabinyan Asher, Pene Hagzera, Esther Chayam, Rakov, Shivim Ama, Viyakar Binyan Hamesh, Amos Rakov, Okamadan, Maya Vishivim, Kanirik, Chazurk, Lagia, Maya. So here he's saying, Maya Vishvim, Kinira should Surich Lagia, Maya Tishim Vishvim. So it's weird. It's like there's 90 and 70. So, uh, and he, he uses 90 in this. Yeah, I think there's, it's, 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 it's 190 and 70. What, so read it, read it again, start over. So, so it says here, the prophet mentions three figures when speaking of the dimensions of the temple. Yeah. 100, 90, and 70. Okay, so my, the Hebrew leaves out the 90. And, ah. and the, it's, it's, it, the note says to put it back, so go ahead. Okay. Each of these figures is connected with the lights. Altogether, the Sephi wrote amount to 100. However, one of these lights is concealed leaving 90. But the lower lights, through which the world is actually conducted, are 70. This is a secret of the verse, man walks about as a shadow. From one point of view, there are 90 lights, corresponding to the Tzadi. From another, there are 70, corresponding to the Lamed and Mem. While from the point of the view of the Supreme Keter, there are 100. All right. So we're in chapter 3, the Temple Courtyards. Let me now discuss the temple courtyards in all their various details, and you will hear the most glorious wisdom. I will skip over certain other subjects that I should have discussed now and leave them until the end, because I am following the path of the flow of blessing, as I have already stated. Remember we're talking about the Hishtalshalis bringing the light down? Right. He's calling that Shefa. So hmm. Kabbalah really is just... I mean, this really sums up the whole entire Rizal in this book. It's just get into Shefa, which is like first step of knowing Kabbalah, and then following it on its way down, and that's where this Kabbalah comes from. It's that simple. Right. All you do is step one, get into Shefa. Number two, be conscious in it, and you can do amazing things in Kabbalah. I mean, it sounds simple. It kind of is simple. The hard part is to get people to understand what is Shefa. Once you get into Shefa, you can then bring down um, Kabbalistic revelation. I mean, whatever it is, whatever you're meant to do. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
As the highways and pathways extended from the foundation stone outwards, two great areas appeared, one in front of the temple building and the other surrounding both the temple and this first area. Let me explain all this in detail. These two areas were in the form of two great courtyards standing in front of and around the temple. The first is called the inner courtyard and the second, the outer courtyard. These are the places of all the king's armies and attendants who stand at his service. They have leaders who are in charge of the entire army. These leaders have their own special areas. These leaders are the seraphim, whose power is enormous. They stand by the throne. All the other troops are encamped under their various flags. Over them stands officers, lower than the seraphim, who give them their orders and supervise all their activities so that everything runs properly without a hitch. The officers Wait. receive from the... Wait a minute, hold on. I'm not seeing... Oh, there it is, Seraphim. Okay, sorry about that. Continue. The officers receive from the inner courtyard, while the lower angels and other troops receive from the outer courtyard. These courtyards are surrounded by lofty walls, which keep all the lights within their limits. The thickness of the walls is the same as the length of the measuring rod, <coughs> and they have the gates enabling the flow of light and blessing to go forth, as I will explain in more detail later on three gates of the inner courtyard. The inner courtyard has three gates, one to the south, one to the north, and one to the east. Each gate is 10 cubits wide, since 10 groups of angels must receive from each one. The height of the gates is 50 cubits. I have already explained this secret above. Uh, however, since the lights had already traveled some distance from the place of amazing connection, the center column no longer had the same great power as when it first emerged from the sanctuary, for its strength is already weakened. For this reason, the east gate of the inner courtyard, corresponding to the center column, was no different from the gates on the two sides. Now all three were alike, and each had a gateway to itself. Uh, vestibules of the inner courtyard. As each of the gates opened up, a vestibule appeared before it, as I have already explained. So yeah, that's, occurred, that's like... Um... <clears throat> that's divine providence, and <clears throat> it's, it's 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 God doing it. <clears throat> but what you learn from that, when you're in the temple, nothing happens by chance. Nothing, zero, right? So everything is divine providence. When the when the Cohen comes to get your offering or whatever it is, right? Everything is under the influence of God Shefa. So imagine, in, I mean, what we you know the word at Silas means emanation, right? Yeah. When you're in the temple, everything that happens is emanating from God. So right. already it's good. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. In this world, it comes from Klippa. Like, I, I like to meditate on water. You ever notice when, when water is being like poured out of a faucet or put in a cup. Don't don't you have every every reason to think that that's like a highly spiritual thing? Like the elixir of life, right? Mm -hmm. I can but see it, that, it's yeah. just a cup it's just a cup of water. Right. It never hits the mark ever. I mean it should. It's like clear, it's bubbly, like I mean, you know, it looks like it should be amazing. Water. But it isn't. <laughs> So in the right. temple, everything's amazing. That's the whole point. Everything. I mean, imagine if I came up to you in the temple and said, Malcolm, can I get you a glass of water? You'd say, okay. wow, it's amazing. Like, just because it, it would be, because you weren't even thinking about the water. Right. And then it right. would make so much sense of, of course I want water. Because it's God giving it to you. God gave you Shefa. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. In this world, even though you're thirsty, you're not really thanking God that God gave you water. You actually think that right. Rabbi Katz is just a nice host, that I'm a nice guy, right? In the temple, I don't exist. So if if, if I say, Malcolm, are you thirsty? Would you like some water? And you weren't thirsty, your soul knows it's God saying, hey, Malcolm, I think you're thirsty. Take a drink. Right, so it's a whole right. different elevated experience. So when all these walls go up and gates open, 
mankind is doing it, or the angels in the Kohanim are doing it, but it's it's just a vessel. God's doing it. Right. It's just an amazing experience, you know, on that level, being being in the temple. It, it, and that's, so, what we, that's what we dream of down here, is the godly experience. Right. And so so this whole this whole book can kind of be summed up as the pathways of Shefa as it emanates out of the Ain Sof and and it's so obvious that it's for the Ain Sof and the Hashem as it progresses down and and it's clothed in the world around us. Yeah, because there's no clippa there. The whole point of Kabbalah right. is getting rid of clippa. When I say Malcolm, right. are you thirsty? There's no clippa for you to think that it's me. I don't really care if you drink. It's not. It's just. I just got a thought. Hey, I should ask Malcolm. But it's God. This is God. You see, there's nothing in the temple that lends itself to Klippa. I'm not wearing a Megadeth shirt. Okay, you're not thinking about football. It just. It's not. It's not what you do there. Right. It, it's right. It, because there's nothing there that. You know why you laugh at a comedy club? Why? Because you're supposed to laugh at a comedy club. Mm-hmm. That's just you, you go. The comedian has ninety percent of his work done for him because you're already preparing to laugh at his jokes. Right, you're a vessel. Yeah, in the temple, God has mitigated every single inch of your body and existence, and the, the temple doesn't lend anything to Klippa. You're not going to look at the stones on the wall and say, hey, that reminds me of a Metallica concert. No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. You're just not going to, you know what I'm saying? It's so, you know, like, you know, like, you know, imagine the host of a house. I have antiques in my house, let's say, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't want you messing up my stuff. So I become very, you know, killing with kindness. Oh, Malcolm, hey, hey, why don't you take your shoes off over there? And Here, come over, sit over here. I'll get you a glass of water. I'm just a neurotic host. God is a really neurotic host. So much so that there's so much inspiration, not Klippa, you never get to think Klippa, therefore it's all divine providence. But in my house here, you 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 see Klippa. So you're not going to consider me godly. You're not going to consider the water godly. You know, you're going to hear my mom say, can't you get your guest a drink? And you're not going to think that that's very holy. Right? Right. And in the temple it's not gonna come out that way. You're gonna realize, wow, I how did he know I wanted to drink or I didn't realize I wanted to drink. You're, it's just gonna be God revelation. Go ahead. As each of the gates opened up, a vestibule appeared before it, as I have already explained. For what occurred only in the case of the center column now occurred in the case of the two side columns. However, the dimensions of the vestibules of these gates are different from those of the sanctuary vestibule. So the lights going forth from the gates of the Israelite court are not the same as the lights that go forth from the sanctuary. In the case of the gates of the Israelite court, the names of Havaya and Ekya made their vestibules eight cubits wide, corresponding to the eight letters of the two names. Joined to them, were the two columns whose identity and measurements you already know. See, that's this is um, junky Kabbalahs where you'd say, like, I, I offer you cookies, and you take the cookies to my house, right? And right. I give you uh, four cookies, just by chance. And you're yeah. like, you're telling your friends, wow, Rabbi Katz is such a Kabbalist. <laughs> Because we have four <laughs> wheels on our car, and he gave us four cookies. How does he know that our car had four wheels? <laughs> like, it's it's that's not how it works. Right. But in the but in the temple, when there's like twenty cubits high, and you're standing with twenty of your friends, and you're all twenty years old, and there's twenty right. koanim, it's like okay. Right. It's all about the twenty. I get it. <laughs> so the, it's you know the, the 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 mathematics don't have to be like, well, Gematria Mashiach, right? It's just right, that it's again, simple. it's it's not Klippa. Right. And 
you know, it's um, let's say uh, I mean, I, this is not holy, but let's just pretend it is, right? I I give uh, three of your friends glasses of water in a temple, right? And Malcolm's wearing a shirt that has three glasses of water on it. Right. I mean, that would be pretty freaky, you know? Yeah. yeah. So it just makes it, it it makes sense on so many levels, and it's comforting. It's a comfort. It's not. It's not supposed to be like four tires and four cups. Wow, that must be what it means. He wants our shoes, <laughs> like from Life of Brian. <laughs> it's just. It's like it's a very deep, penetrating, and it do, it only makes sense, but in, in a realm of not non articulation. Mm-hmm. You know, or let's say you know I give you uh, four of your friends a glass of water. And, 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 and it's like before you came to the temple, you went out for coffee and the waitress gave all of you four friends a glass of water in the exact same way the temple. You know what I'm saying? Not deja vu. It's just there's something to it. You know what I mean? You get the sense there's something to that. What What is that? And you, don't, you don't have to have an answer why. All you have to know is it's from God. And that's what God does. He lets you know that he's there and he's taking care of you. All right. Let me now tell you some great secrets concerning. Oh, sorry, I skipped a paragraph there. Um, Either these gates opened up in the walls to allow the flow of blessing to pass outwards. The most beautiful chambers appeared on both sides of each gate, three to the right and three to the left. The three chambers on each side of the gate open into one another, while the entrances to the two chambers immediately adjoining the gate on either side face one another. So, uh, your problem is Klippa, as always, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're so in Klippa, in this world, you don't recognize the chef of God coming to you. So, when you're at the restaurant and you and your friends order water, and, you know, the the kitchen door opens, the waitress comes out, it's so Klippa, Dick, you don't don't appreciate that it's a sealess in this world. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Because of the 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 kinoyim, the nicknames of God. Um, when she comes out of the door, and it's sealess, it would be like the twenty cubit high wall, right? Right. Here, she's yelling at the cook, "You low life! I'm not your twenty year old girlfriend. Go away!" <laughs> and she's telling you where where the chef is coming from. But you believe the you know the low life kind of little drama going on, right? Right. But if you if you really really knew the Kabbalah and paid attention, you would see it's at Silas in this world. So not only are you, we're, you know you're not a scholar of Kabbalah, you believe the Klippa, you know that's 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 the test. Can you get to the truth in this world? And I'll I'll tell you um, the challenge. Is Clipper real? Yes. But uh, do you have the right, when I give you water in my house, do you have the right to say that it's a holy experience? And I don't mean yes or no. I'm saying, can the mind actually penetrate beyond Clipper? Or is it just imagination, dimium? I think it, I, hmm? I, I, will, I don't know if I'm right, but I think the mind could definitely penetrate past the clipper. It would take really, though, just craftsmanship, you know what I'm saying? R- okay, I see. So you're saying just the average. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm saying how would you possibly turn Rabbi Katz and his family in, into a holy experience? Mm-hmm. How cool. do you get God under that? So it's a very strong challenge, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, when when I, uh, just looking around my office, I mean, you have to say my office is at Silas, like everybody else, right? Right. But I set it up, it's my clipper here, you know, it's not the Holy of Holies. But yet, you know, if I right, right now I'm looking at my, my books in front of my microphone, okay? There's my Art Scroll Tanakh, small one. I use for translations. My, I have a Rabbeinu Tom to fill and bag next to it. And it's a bookshelf with certain books and a dictionary 
a old kind of like torn up dictionary next to it. Why? What's the connection? There's a, you know, it takes up the whole shelf, a, a ratty dictionary on the right, the tefillin bag in the middle, and the art scroll on the left, green, blue, white. Now we know by Kabbalistic truth that's not an accident, right? Right. What does it mean? What does it mean that the books behind my tallest bag are like this Kabbalistic work, um, Gateway to Talmud, Chidushi Ramban, Shulchan Shlomo, behind the dictionary is like my Midrash Rabbah, Yolchot Shimoni, and behind the Tanakh is a couple of random books. What does it mean? Why did I choose that? Because it wasn't me doing it intentionally. God did it. And God doesn't do anything that's not holy. So when you come into my house, if you were a, a, a Navi or something, you would see, like, of course this is holy. David Katz put his tallest bag there and his art scroll there. What else would it be? That's obviously the the uh, the, the, cha- the chamber with the the this and the that and the holy and the Ekia and Yudke Vavke, right? Mm-hmm. Why don't we see it? And do you, do you, Mr. Klippa, have the right... I mean this kind of an antagonizing way, you know, to to penetrate my clip and say that you know meaning there. I mean, can you actually get to the holiness? It's a nice question, no. isn't it? That's a great question, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a challenge. You probably can't do it. No one can do it. Um, we know that it technically can be done, but it's it's ain't self. I mean, you would have yeah, to like get a revelation. You said uh, earlier, it's like a level of non-articulation. So by, the, by that right. logic, it, it, it would just have to make it, sense to you. Exactly. And it, for you to analyze it and try to figure it out is already Klippa. That's right. That's why you have to be Bittal, let go. You would have to really connect to Keter, but not only Keter, but Atik of Keter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we know that it exists and we can, and, and so we can analyze it to the point where not getting it, just the properties of how it could work, you know? Right. But actually, I mean, I am staring at the Orain Sof right now. But I'm not aware of that because I only see Clippa, and it's my Clippa of, you know, why I put my stuff there. So then, you, have, you know, what is Clippa? I mean, what what is Simpson? Clippa is Simpson. Why don't I know why God did it? Through me. What is keeping me from knowing God? Because we, we can say there's nothing other than, than God, right? So I'm God, you're God, it's all God, right? Mm-hmm. But then why don't I know the meaning of my tallest bag? What is keeping mm-hmm. me from knowing the root of the tallest bag? That I have a separate existence. Now I'm not God, which is a vote of by saying that. That's how I, you know. I'm Klippa. Yeah. It's my evil. And we have to repair the world so on the level of the temple that I understand what God does even through me. So there's a power that separates me and my talus bag. Or the power behind my talus bag. I have no idea why I did it. None. Anyways, that, that's, 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 that's the idea. Right? In, in the temple... You won't, like you said, you won't articulate it, but you'll you'll just connect to you'll you'll connect to the why. Right. Go ahead. Let me now tell you some great secrets concerning these entrances. You must understand that in order for the flow of blessing that goes out into the world to be perfectly balanced and suited to the needs of their inhabitants, it must always have the proper blend of judgment and mercy. So hold on. Right. So there's, and- there's actually the answer to our question about the tallest bag. Remember we say Shefa comes down? Yeah. And it's like pools of water, like filling channels? Right. So we have to say there's something called the Rabbi Cat's office, correct? Mm-hmm. And everything that got – when I moved into my house, everything took its place, did it not? Yeah. They set up my computer table. And I set up my microphone. I mean, all the things. I mean, I, I probably have a billion things in here. There's a lot of things in my office. Do you realize I brought every single one of those things in here? Mm-hmm. 
Do you realize that? Every you brought I'm looking every at single right thing now, your office. I physically you, brought, you personally. Huh? You personally is what you're saying. Like, yeah, I put physically. everything in here. My headphones on my lamp, my trapper keeper, my books, my other headphones, my hand cream, my Kleenex, stender, earphones, trash can, bookshelves, paper, ruler, bunch of yarmulkes, other computer. I mean, there's a million vessels in here, man. Right. Dictionary, stapler, my mouse, my keyboard, my monitor here, my speaker, my, my phone, pens, fan, more books. I mean, it's endless. I could go on endless, endless, endless. Then where did I get my notebook? Where did I get those books? Where did I get the stapler? Where did I get the mouse? Where did I get this pen? Where did I get this stender? Where has this stender been? Uh, you see, it's my whole life is in here. Yeah. But I also have a bedroom upstairs. So it's only part of my life. <laughs> So the point is, is that when I put my to fill in on that shelf right there, what place was I satisfying of, of reality? You see what I'm saying? When I put the to fill in there, why did the, there was a question where to put the to fill in? So why did I choose that spot right there? There, there's a, there's a, a world right there. It's satisfying a, a, a world. It's a, it's man, it's manning a post. So when I was putting together my my office, there came a time when you know we 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 weren't Abba anymore. We weren't Bina anymore. You know we were in Zeron Pin, the Akrayim of Ema, whatever it is, right? And it came time kabbalistically to say, God says, "Hey, Deva, where are we going to put the toss bag?" And I say, "Hey, God, what's going on? We're going to put it right here." And he says, yeah, that's right. That's the Akrayim of Abba and blah, blah, blah. And I, I fulfilled a, 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 a tikkun of a Kabbalistic level. Only I called it, you know, scratch my head, look dumb for a while, put the tefill in there, to get confused, go get a snack, come back, and forget all about it, right? Right. But at the end of the day, there was a reason and an accomplishment of why I put it there. So we can believe my clippa, or we can understand or try to understand what is God telling me to put my tefill in there. There's obviously something that I'm satisfying of its seamless in this world, along with my book, and my lamp, and my microphone. You too. I mean, look look around your office right now, look or whatever you're at. Look around. Why did you put yeah. that stuff there? Yeah, you could you could trace every single thing like endlessly back. And it's like, right. and it's root but even it's, in this world, like where it came from. It has to be there. I analyzed my entire office against my wishes and will. And I realized and concluded this is the only place my tallest bag can go. Right. I have no idea why, you know, why I realized that. But somehow I realized the Kabbalist truth, that's what it is. The, the God list is when that makes sense to you. It doesn't make sense to me. I just know the truth. The real, you know, why I did it, I have no idea. I don't even remember putting it there. But it doesn't move. You know, it doesn't move a spot. If that's its spot. Determine the spot. Right. Go ahead. Uh, it must always have the proper blend of judgment and mercy. Right and left in the chariot allude respectively to mercy and judgment. Nothing is able to attain its properly rectified state except through male and female. For this reason, the lights are male and female, and together they adjust and balance the flow of blessing so as to bring all things to a state of perfection. This explains why these chambers are found here. Their secret is bound up with their root, a triad of Chesed Yevora Tiferas to the right and a similar triad to the left. The inside measurement of each chamber is six cubits, for here the Vav, the male element, predominates. The thickness of the walls of the chambers is five cubits, for here the He, the female element, predominates. Thus, each of these chambers is a union of male and female. The blessing and sustenance suitable for all the Seraphim is already gathered within the inner courtyard. When the flow of blessing passes through the gate, it immediately enters these chambers first, 
for the flow of blessing leaving from the right enters the left-hand chambers, while the flow leaving from the left enters the right-hand chambers. The flow of blessing is rectified in the three chambers on each side and adjusted in a balance of kindness, judgment, and mercy, depending on whether kindness or strict judgment holds sway. It is the vav and he, male and female, that make the adjustment. Afterwards, the flow goes forth with perfect balance, ready to be given to those who require it. Uh, so that's, roofs that's of the, the thing. Chambers. There's there's like gates and chambers. So right. In my clip of world here, I'm probably not. How would you say it? The chef is not coming down right because I'm not in the holy temple. Right. There's a blockage. But, but at the same time, you have to say it is coming down. Right. Cause, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's coming down. Ah, ah, ah. It is coming down right. But I, but the Klippa is keeping me away from that knowledge. And... Keeping... Huh? Keeping you away from the realization of it? Like I the... Think, yeah, yeah. The revelation of it? Yeah. So would I have to either adjust my my office or just stop seeing the Klippa? I think it's the same question. Do you change right. your muzzle or keep your muzzle? Right? <laughs> right. Because right now my my office is the Holy of Holies. But I see Clippa. If I could adjust you know the the din and chesed rachamim things, then it, it, would, it would be a change of muzzle and, 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 and adjust the flow. Or just stop seeing Clippa and understand where 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 you see Clippa and then it goes away and it becomes only holy. So let, let's say I have things that are totally Clippa here. I think that's what we're trying to say. I have things totally Clippa in my office. I'll tell you one of them. Um, a sushi menu. Is that holy? No. Right? So it's like in my in my in my, my basket of receipts and stuff. There's a sushi menu. I have to get on the level to realize that too is holy. Right? If you look on the, the Kabbalistic imagery of that, it's like the fractal of my life, right? Right. So the chef is blocked by the by the by the by the clipper. I I look at my office and if you ask me what ratio is holy to Clippa, I'd say what, you know, 70-30. I got some things in my office that are not good. Sushi menu, useless. The trash can's not too holy, right? Mm. And that's why you, you don't understand the Shefa. If you understood the Clippa and your life is, is also holy, deep down, where it's, you know, the evil's mavatal. Then you'd be able to understand the Shefa coming through. So you're living limited, and that's your fault because you're believing the Klippa that you live with. If you saw only the holiness, then you would be holy and with Shefa. So, so again, when you put it in this way, the temple doesn't have this problem. See what I'm saying? The temple right. is the perfect ratio of, of Chesed and Gevura and. And all these things. So when there's a dynamic exchange for the chef to flow through, you're also learning how chef works. Then you you take that goodness back to your life, and you realize, well, wow, my office is a little mishkan. It's like the temple. I thought that was shtuskite, but I see now that's how God runs the world. You know, maybe, maybe you know why you put to fill in in the middle of the shelf and this you, you'd see in the temple. That's how it's done, right. <laughs> and it made sense. You know, it could be that because my to fill in is twenty is a is a microcosm of twenty amas off the ground. Where right. else would it go? So you're missing knowledge, you're missing wisdom, you're missing the temple experience. You don't know what's beyond Klippa. That goes into the symptom. You're basically immature and ignorant. 
And the temple is your your mature experience where you mature your mind and soul. You're born into a world underdeveloped. The more you develop, you understand those things until ultimately it becomes a godly experience. Go ahead. All right. Um, the roofs of the chambers. Let me tell you what causes the flow of blessing emerging from the gates to make a detour into these chambers instead of going straight out. When the gate opened, the three lights that made 13, as mentioned earlier, passed through. As they went out, they joined together with 12 other lights standing at the gate itself. These are the 12 letters, Aleph, Dalet, uh, no, what does that say? I, I don't know what the Hebrew says, but there's, what uh, what 12 letters is he referencing here? Tell me, exa- I lost you when I was going to that thing. Tell me exactly where you're at. Uh, as the lights went out, they joined together with 12 other lights. Standing which portion? Uh, we're at the roofs of the chambers. Um, where? The roofs of the chambers. Um, we're talking about the lights, the 13 lights joining with the 12. Okay. Uh, and then it says these are the 12 letters. Just wondering what letters he's referencing. Yeah, there. no. Let's see. It's, it was hard to follow. You're good, I'm letting you go fast. It sounds right. Um, ah, yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mispash Yusham, Liyud Gimel, Kehem, Yud Beis Oisius. It's the 12 letters. Gimel. Ah, uh, no, the three Yudkiv of case, right? Or, or it? It's the, the Shem Hashem filled out. Three times four is twelve. Oh, okay. All right. I was just wondering. Okay. Uh, together, they make a total of 25. These 25 lights spread out on both sides from the roof of the extreme right-hand chamber to the roof of the extreme left-hand chamber. These lights did not go very far out. They simply spread out across the width of the chambers on both sides above their roofs, but not below. Thus, as the flow of blessing leaves the gates, these lights shine down into it from above. The power of this light causes the flow of blessing to broaden and flow to the sides. Wait a minute. I'm having a hard time following. One second. I think he's wording it just different than mine. Hold on. One second. Tell me again where where you were. Uh, the general portion we're in is about the roofs of the chambers. I have. Is a, I, I wanted to correct you before, and I didn't think it was going to be a problem. I have what's called the Shlosha Ula Me Azaris Yisrael, the three chambers oh. of the Azar Yisrael. He doesn't say three, does he? No, not at all. See, I was going to correct you about them, but I didn't think it was going to be a big deal. Um. So I should tell you the basin is temple three gates of the courtyard, three temple courtyards. Three temple courtyards. Okay, no, uh, so what's your what's your chapter called? We're in the general chapter of the temple courtyards. The sub chapter is the roof okay. of all the right, chambers. So, right, three temple Yeah, so it's alright, so yeah, it's called the three temple courtyards. And he didn't do that. Okay, let's Alright, so yeah, okay, so you're in there, so I thought. Uh, and you're, and you're, and did you get to the three uh, the three gates of the inner courtyard yet? Uh, yeah, yeah. We 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 talked about the gates already. No, no, no. The the the, the next bold print at the bottom of eighty nine. Three gates of the inner courtyard. Um, we're on page. Yeah, we're way past that. We're on page ninety one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I wasn't following it in your book. Yeah, see, if you turn to page 91, we're in Roofs of the Chambers. One second here. One second here. Roofs of the Chambers. Ah, there it is. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, you're going fast. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. No, it just sounded, it sounded right. I didn't, it didn't, it didn't, I, I know the buzzwords when you get it wrong. You know what I'm saying? When, when he gets yeah. <laughs> Where where did you get those twelve the twelve the twelve from? Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. All right, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. 
Start with uh, the roofs of the chambers again, and go just go a little slow, just so we can. Okay. Make... Sure. Let me tell you what causes the flow of blessing emerging from the gates to make a detour into these chambers instead of going straight out. When the gate opened, the three lights that made thirteen, as mentioned earlier, passed through. Okay. As they went out, they joined together with twelve other lights standing at the gate itself. These are the 12 letters. Together, they make a total of 25. Okay, okay so that's where you skipped out. Aleph, Dalet, Nun, Yud, of, of Shem Adnus, the 12 letters of Adnus. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Okay. He, he, didn't, he didn't tell you that? Uh, no, he, he put it there. No, it's, he put it there. I just wasn't, I'm guessing that's what it was. I just didn't want to okay. say something wrong. Okay, so, okay keep going. Uh, these 25 lights spread out on both sides from the roof of the extreme right-hand chamber to the roof of the extreme left-hand chamber. These lights did not go very far out. They simply spread out across the width of the chambers on both sides above their roofs, but not below. Thus, as the flow of blessing leaves the gate, these lights shine down into it from above. The power of this light causes the flow of blessing to broaden and flow to the sides like the lights above, instead of simply spreading outwards. It is then that the right side of the flow enters the chambers on the left, while the left side of the flow enters the chambers on the right, until everything is brought into perfect balance. After being rectified in these chambers, the flow of blessing goes forth from the openings of the two chambers immediately adjacent to the gate on either side, and the two streams join together in the middle to make one. Then another light shines on it and brings it outside to be given to its intended recipients. The prophet alludes to this when he says, and he measured the gate from the roof of the chamber to the roof. You should understand that all the various measurements and dimensions are only mentioned because they allude to some aspect of wisdom and are known to be necessary for the proper government of the worlds. So that's the thing. The whole Kabbalistic message of life is simply to elevate our Klippa world into the reality that it is of the temple. Right. Right. The Klippa is the diminishment of, of, of like you said, the above to the below, right? So the world has Shefa coming down and there's like channels. And like we said at the very beginning of the book about the arteries and the flow and the sustenance, right? Yeah. So the world is the tree of life. The roots and branches, it is. And the world's perfect. It's just not holy because of Klippa. That's why Kabbalah right. 101 is removing Klippa. Why? So that you elevate the world of Asiya into Atsilas and sanctify the third temple. Right. To the point where you should just know God is with you. We don't... That's how you repair the Simpson. We don't know God is with us. So God gave the Torah to let us know what we don't know. And then it's the manual to elevate so that we can be aware through the divine providence, things just happening, and then we know God is with us forever. So then you're just aware of the Shefa flowing through the channels of creation. That's really all you need to live a good life. Mm -hmm. Right? You're you're only upset because I gave you water. But if you would just know that it was God and not me, you'd be fine. See what I'm saying? Right. You'd have no problem. That's what's gotta happen, elevating the creation on that level. Mm -hmm. uh, keep going. Okay. Uh, the temple service. It is in this inner courtyard that the outside altar, or altar of the burnt offering, is located. This is where the daily sacrifices are offered. I must now explain the order of the temple services and offerings to the king. Make every effort to understand. Know that all the heavenly hosts, the angels and the souls, receive from the array of holy lights the flow of sustenance and power they need in order to survive and carry out their duties. Every day, 
all creating beings must receive blessing and sustenance from their creator. See, that's that's, Why do I, that's like the episode of Kabbalah. Right. Your yeah. soul's getting from God, and, and you, it just, you know. Yeah, whether you know what, it or not. Yeah, and that's what God does. He, he, we, you, you, do you ever, if you, if you ever, you said Birkat Hamazon, right? Yeah. Do you know what it means? What, what the, what the entire blessing means, or yeah, or you're giving thanks for, for the sustenance. What, what does that mean? Mm, uh, you're acknowledging that you get everything from a higher source. So it's like, hey, thanks, God. It was good food. It was awesome. Yeah, Shakaya, it was pretty cool. Thanks, God. Well, I think it's a little deeper than that. <laughs> so most people don't know what it, what it says in Birkat Amazon. Ready for this? Okay. This is kind of like my take on it, like Derek Drush, um, in some aspects. But most of it I'll keep literal. Ready? Mm-hmm. It's always a question how you start a blessing. It's always in, in Davening 101. So it says, Baruch, I, I, this is my shot. It means blessed. Mm-hmm. But, 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 but stop, right? Blessed. So now we're receiving from God, right? Right. We're, we're acknowledging it's God. So we say, Ata, it's you. I get it. It's divine providence, you. All right, so ready? ready? Hashem Elokeinu. Our God, King of the world. Hazan es ha'olam kulo. He nourishes the world, all of it. In his goodness, in his grace, in his kindness, and in his mercy. He gives bread to all flesh, for his kindness is forever. And with his great goodness, which is always and constant, there's no lack for us. And there will never be lack for us. Mazon, sustenance, is forever and ever. And for the sake of his great name, for he is God and he nourishes and like parnasas, right? For everything and makes makes it for better for everything and prepares sustenance for all of his creations that he created. As it says, open your hand. And and it was satisfied for every every living thing and will. Blessed are you, God. Or blessed, it's why is it why is the world blessed? It's you, God, has, who gives sustenance to everything. Is that not amazing? Yeah, that's great. No, people don't realize all of Kabbalah is said in the first paragraph of the Birkat Amazon. Yeah. It's- that's huge, yeah, because, you know, we say that every, like, every day almost, you know what I mean? Some people like... Yeah, and they don't realize it is the tachlis of all Kabbalah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, all right. Um, why do I say every day? Because each day is a unique level and no day is like any other. I cannot go into this in depth as it would require lengthy explanation, so I will be brief. Use all your powers of intellect to plumb the depths of these matters. Wait a minute, I want to see that word intellect. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's good. And you got to strengthen all your intellect. Go ahead. Uh, Every day, the lower Wait, wait, by the way, I gave a class tonight earlier. You know what Seichel is, according to the class I gave? What? Um, That which you know in matters of wisdom, not for having figured it out and worked on it yourself... But God literally reveals it to you. Ah, huh, that's so, it, so it's like it's like strengthen, strengthen your ability to get it. See what I'm saying? Like right. your med, your, your meditative intellect. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Every day, the lower realms need to draw close to the upper realms. As we're saying, you gotta elevate. The- you got to elevate the world. That's the whole point. Uh, in order that the branches should be connected to the roots. That's it. This, this way... This is what we've been saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. This way, the angels are bound to their roots and the souls to theirs. It is the animal offering that brings the angels close. 
while the incense offering brings the souls close. Understand this well, for this is the secret of man and animal. The innermost beings are called man, while the exterior creatures are called animal. Uh, types of sacrificial animals and birds. The wait, sacrifices. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, do this paragraph, and then we'll stop at the Seder Hakarban. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I what, think what we're page, at, wait, wait, we're what, page, what page are you on? Ninety-three. I think we're at Seder Hakarban. Um. No, no, no. We got one more. Uh, Suge Hakaila oh, Korban. Suge Hak. Types of sacrifice. Bottom of ninety-three. You want to stop at the bottom of ninety-three? Um, at the top of 94 we'll stop okay okay. the sacrifices consist of animals oxen, sheep and goats and birds, doves and pigeons but not wild animals each of these three categories has its unique place in the order of creation the domesticated animals in the world of Bria the birds in that of Yatsira and the wild animals in that of Asiya. The wild animals are on such a lowly level, they are not brought as offerings. Because of the powerful hold of impurity on their level, they would not have the strength to ascend to such an exalted place. The actual altar is the special place prepared for the performance of this service. The intrinsic quality of the altar derives from the point, the place of desire. Here burns the blazing fire of which it is said, this is the burnt offering on the pyre. Make every effort to understand, for these are very deep matters. So how does that work? We're saying that this is how you elevate the worlds. Right. We want to elevate our world. Oh, this is how you get rid of the clippa. This is the right. knowledge of getting rid of the clippa. I know that a rat is clippa because it doesn't go on the altar, right? Right. And I, so it gives you perspective. And I know that an owl is not really that holy. So if you're a Votazara that says owls are holy, you're a liar. You're an idolater, right? Right. Right. Clip. So, so cows, cows, we know why in, like India or even Sriam, whatever it was, they like worship cows because mm -hmm. it's, it's almost a holy animal. It's so, but in Judaism, it's so holy, I can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> so you you elevate the cow, and when you have when you have the knowledge and wisdom of where everything is elevated, then we know where we are as men, right? I don't eat rats, so so mm -hmm. I I have a different perspective of myself. If you give me a rat on a platter, I, I ignore you. Just think about that. You know, it elevates mankind. The people do eat rats. Right. So when you the, the when when you judge reality based on animals and man, which is all the animal kingdom, really think about it. It's it, it's the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, life is not Wall Street. It's lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Right. So that explains Noah. What was Noah doing on the ark? He was elevating the creation. Think about it. What was Noah's ark? It was Malchus of Atzilus. Right. Like the ark floated on the waters. That's what he was doing. The pure animals, impure animals. So therefore, he knew where every man was. And he, it's pretty impressive. Well, so the outer realm, right, the outer realm, the inner realm, mm -hmm. and the animal. So that's, that's really, I guess, you know, I'd say Noah's Ark really is the Kiddush here. Of, of, How does of, that work since hmm? on our level we're not elevating the things that are the wild animals, but, you know, on Noah's Ark he's bringing in even the impure, right? I think they brought in the, the pure, no? No, he brought the pure and the impure. Um, well, I think this is the thing. He had he had a he had to elevate the impure also. That's what's saying. Because the in Yitzira, not all birds are, are, are pure. 
Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so see. everything went different to its, it went to it. again. It's 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 the water channel of of progression. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where where does it reach its progression? You see what I'm saying? The the Yitzira had to take its place, and then Bria had to take its place, and then Noah and Shem and all them took their place in Atzilus as the inner level of man. They they were the ones that were considered in the ark, not the animal. Mm-hmm. Right? God considered right, Noah right. in the ark. Besides the fact that he told Noah to bring the animals in, Noah was one that was considered categorically in the middle of the ark, right? So that's the panemium, the inner the inner level. And then, you know, just in the ark, general was the chitzayin in the outside. Right. And then you have the stuff outside the ark. Right. Which is like the klipa. Total klipa. And they said that the, 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 the wild animals were you know, were all around. Yeah. So it, made, it makes total sense. Yeah, no, wow, that's great. Noah really made... Through through Asiya, an elevation to its sealus. Hmm. Wow. And then that's what Kabbalah Chasidus teaches about it. The flood waters were Klippa. You know? And right. God destroyed Klippa with the flood. W- whether you take it literal or not, beside the point, he went to its sealus. It really doesn't matter at that point. Right. And then they say the Zohar is, is called Noah's Ark. It's an aspect of that. Mm-hmm. So what we're seeing is that that really is what you're supposed to do is elevate. You're supposed to elevate into like into like an ark into Malchus of its silas. But you have to you have to do it right. You have to you know, every every uh, according to the third temple. I would say that's probably why Noah didn't bring the full redemption. Because he elevated like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai elevated. But the the Chiddush is to elevate according to the order of creation, and only the third right. temple elevation can can do that. Because hmm. if you leave stuff out, it's an incomplete redemption. You have to elevate all of mankind, the whole world. All right, so let's um, stop there. We got Seder Hakarban <clears throat> next time. Okay. And again, uh, we got, we're almost done really, man. <clears throat> yeah, we can really do this. 195, and we're at, we got 20 pages to go. How many pages have we done? A lot. Um, one, like 150. So we've done 25. We're about halfway done. That's great. More than halfway done. Yeah. I think yeah, I think we're gonna get a good groove and we're gonna we're gonna knock some stuff out. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh Lila Tove and until next time and God willing we'll make a nice CM on the safer. All right. Good night, Rabbi. Lila Tove.